Hello and welcome to the Naked Eye podcast. This is Nathan Oxenfeld coming to you today over Memorial Day weekend here in May 2020. And I'm super excited to be joined by my vision teacher, Dr. Jerry Ann Tabor, who's based in California. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about her experience with not only natural vision improvement, but also a particular method she developed called the rapid healing technique. Uh, she's actually going to be doing a, a full class on that next weekend on May 30th, 2020. So really excited to learn a little bit about it today and just to introduce you to Dr. Tabor. The listeners of my show probably have heard your name before because I mention you a lot when I talk about my personal journey from blurry vision to clear vision and working with you as my coach. So I'm really glad to be able to put a face and a voice to the name today. So why don't we just kind of start off by you introducing yourself a little bit and, and uh, we can take it from there. Hello, I'm Dr. Joran Taper and it's a pleasure to be here today. And um, I'm looking forward to giving this workshop, the rapid healing technique next week. And uh, it's, it's one of the probably most exciting things a person can do for themselves to just clear their own emotional thing. You know yourself what you have emotionally. No one needs to tell you. So you yourself can heal yourself. And it's very simple. It's one of the most simplest things I have ever done in my life. And um, it's easy, simple, and fun. So that's what the workshop is all about, is to teach you how to do that. And it should be a fun thing to learn something new and help yourself. So that's basically what it's all about. Absolutely. And, you know, it's definitely a part of, of what you shared with me and in, in our work together of, of working on healing my vision, you know, because I think before I met you and started working with you, I was approaching my vision improvement process and vision healing process a little bit more on the physical side. I was kind of doing kind of more of the eye exercise kind of thing, you know, and, and really working with you really opened me a lot more up to the whole emotional connection to, you know, some of the root causes of why I even developed myopia and astigmatism in the first place. Um, and so maybe sort of backtracking um, and leading into the rapid healing technique, uh, do you want to just let people know kind of how you got started with the vision work and, and your personal experience with it too? Yes, what, what happened, uh, I've been teaching for over 48 years now, and my students would have an emotional breakthrough, and I personally have done a lot of emotional work with the Reiki and therapy, and of course, I knew that people didn't want to go into heavy, deep emotional work, so I really sort of just had a prayer to God, I would, we, can you send me something that is anybody can do that's simple and lo and behold about 2013 or 20 uh, 2003 uh, a friend of mine channeled some information and it was all about the emotional energy patterns that everyone on the planet experience so i she had written it all out and I read it and I got so excited because I thought, oh my goodness, this is absolutely wonderful because of all the emotional work I had done. And then I thought, well, what can we do about it? So I was doing some uh, work with the teacher's manual and uh, I did some work with uh, Paul Dennison doing uh, some emotional work and he developed a very simple way to clear emotions. So I took his technique of clearing emotions, added to the information about the emotional energy patterns, and that's how rapid healing technique was born. So now you have this wonderful information that gives you all kinds of ways to know what was going on emotionally for yourself in a very simple way and to clear it. So that's how the whole thing 
was born <laughs> and it took me a whole year to write the book <laughs> but yeah. it didn't take me long to discover it <laughs> so that's that's how we all how I got started with it and I use it with all my students in teaching mm -hmm. and I teach it to them and it's it's a wonderful wonderful tool for anyone and you can also um, say you are working with an older person or a younger child, you can actually clear things for them too. So you can become a surrogate. So there's this a lot, has a lot of wonderful ways to apply it besides just personally. Yeah, I remember when you were first teaching it to me and, and I was starting to learn it myself, you know, you were, you were also doing some clearings for me before I was really you know, getting better at doing it on my own. And, and I thought that was really cool with us being at a distance, not yeah. even necessarily being in the same room together, but, you know, right. still being able to, to have that kind of experience. Right. You there. can do yeah. distant work too. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's, and I've done a lot of um, online teaching and also I've done that with students, just teaching it to them and teaching them how to do it and clearing them also. So yeah. it's, it's fantastic. And I know, you know, the purpose of the class next weekend is really to actually teach people how to do it and, and kind of learn the mechanics so they can apply it themselves. Um, but rather than going into that today, maybe could you sort of just explain uh, maybe sort of what you mean when you say, you know, clearing an emotion or, or if people are kind of new to this sort of emotional okay. link? Well, what, what happens, um, just as an example, you're going along in life and someone says something to you and it really upsets you and you go and you're upset and you're angry mm -hmm. and it isn't really what that person is doing or saying it's it's triggering unconscious things in your subconscious mind that have been laying there dormant until this trigger comes along and whoops up it comes it's like a like a toaster you, you push it down when you get it but when it comes back up it's like a toaster it just pops up uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and there you have that emotion again and so sometimes when you just give it a little thought you know why am I feeling this way what who, where, where did I feel this before in my life what's going on why am I so upset with this statement or this way that this person talked to me so you kind of can figure out sometimes where that comes from. And uh, if you don't know, then you look at this, you know, emotional pattern sheet that explains exactly, and you muscle test it to see, okay, which one is it? And then you can go from there, even if you don't know the original event, because it gets masked. Yeah. The original event, event is gone, but the person is triggering that event and sometimes they don't make sense at all. So this, this uh, emotional pattern sheet, you can go to and find out exactly which emotion and pattern it is and heal it. So, you, don't, you know, and it isn't that, that person in a way is a blessing because they're bringing this out in you that you, you had buried. So, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing but it doesn't feel good. <laughs> right, yeah. So, so you so can guess, clear that emotion from your subconscious mind. It's really how it works. Okay, so it's like <clears throat> maybe next time somebody, you hear something like that or, or you're in that kind of situation where in the past it would have just kind of triggered that thing. Right. You kind of sort of break that cycle so that, I guess what, what would be the outcome once it is cleared, like you, you just kind of stay less affected by that or? Well, then, so that person may, that person's not going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be someone close to you or whatever. But they, they're they still going to do what they do or say what they're going to say. But you just go, oh, okay. You know, he's being a grump now, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's not triggering an emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not being upset. Um, one of the things that uh, I had a really good friend for many, many years, she's still a good friend, 
but she used to just upset me tremendously. So I used the rapid healing technique and I went through everything that upset me about her. Mm -hmm. Everything. Went through all of my emotions about that and cleared it. Well, she hasn't changed, but I'm not reacting to her. Mm. She's still my good friend, you know, but I don't react to the way she behaves. It used to upset me, but that's because there was parts of me that were just like that. So right. I cleared the parts in me that were being upset about what I saw in her. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, kind of sounds like what you're saying is we're taking things that kind of were on the more unconscious, subconscious level, and we're kind of shining some light on it and, and like understanding what these patterns are and, and these tendencies. And then, yeah, once we just become aware of it, then we can make sort of a different maybe a more right. of a responding versus reacting kind of kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And of course it's not happening now, but say what used to upset me when we live in California and price of gasoline at one time just got ridiculous. And I would get upset every time they raise the price of gasoline. Well, I finally just cleared my upsetness about the gasoline. So now when they raise the gas, I don't get upset. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and we're still higher than anybody in the country. California yeah. just pay we pay for our good weather. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Through the gasoline pump. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like the way you explain it in terms of you know, there's only so much we can do to change other people or change the world, but like, you know, what I'm hearing you also say is like we we can change ourselves. We have a lot yeah, that we can right. kind of work on within. We can only change ourselves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but as I have been sharing the rapid healing technique with my students and, and teaching them the protocol and, and clearing these things, um, one thing that I personally came to in my own experience with it and, and the way I kind of explain it to some of my students too is um, on a more physiological level with the uh, central nervous system, the autonomic nervous system with the parasympathetic versus the sympathetic. Um, for me personally, when I would think of those things that would upset me or scare me or create that, that anger, I felt like it was kind of like flipping me into that sympathetic, like fight, fight or flee, fight, <laughs> fight, flight fight or, or flight. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I feel like whenever it, I, that trigger would come, it was almost like triggering the nervous system to kind of get into that sympathetic state. And I, I feel like, one of the, the benefits of me using the rapid healing technique is to kind of get into more of the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest, digest, relax one, um, even in the face of that kind of fear or that thought. And, and then the next time there's that trigger, I won't automatically fall into that sympathetic kind of state. I can maybe stay a little more calm and collected and, and kind of relaxed about it. You just explained it very well. Yes, because that's exactly what happens. Yes. Cool. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> and you're very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, you're the one who taught me, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm also really curious, you know, one, one of the, the first ways you shared it with me was in regards to vision in particular. And really, because I got my glasses when I was like seven or eight years old. And so you actually had me go back to when I was five and six and, and you did some muscle testing to figure out, okay, what age exactly should we be targeting and, and looking for potential clues here or, you know, causes of stress or, or fear or transition or even trauma. Um, and that was kind of the first time I had done that on that level. Um, but what I love about the rapid healing technique is that it's not just for vision, you know, it, it can really right. help with anything, anything else. So, uh, yeah. Do you, do you find that like you, you know, with, with yourself or with your students, like you use it more for vision or just like across the board? Well, it, it's just that when things come up, when you're doing and training, then you can go and clear it right now. Mm -hmm. You know, you can clear it when it comes up because some 
some people have memories that are tied to the eyes. Yeah. I remember uh, one young man, particularly, he was, uh, he wanted to be an airline pilot and he had his air, you know, he had his license to fly and that he wanted to go into higher airplane, you know, bigger airplanes and so mm. forth. So he needed his 2020 vision to do that. So he came for eye training and I was using the shifter with him and yes, the shifter. <laughs> and he just, he had, he went, Oh, and I said, what's the matter? He said, I just remembered. He said, I was in an airplane and I was stuck I, and I crashed. But he said, I, I remembered nothing except that I woke up and I was sitting on the wing. He said, now I remember the crash. Mm. So the eyes shifting brought up the memory of, that he had repressed about the plane crash. So, you know, that came up and actually because it came up and it cleared it as well. Yeah. So, you know, that that's the kind of things that are tied to the eyes. People have emotional breakthroughs. I remember one woman, an older woman, uh, probably in her 70 to 80s, you know, up, up in that range. And we were doing some reading. Yeah. And she just started to cry. And I said, well, what's the matter? And she said, I just have this memory of the teacher going to hit my hands with the ruler when she was young and in school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we repress these things. Yeah. And then things that we do that are tied to our eyes, it comes out. So it's, it's a wonderful tool for clearing it immediately. It instantly clears. Yeah, and that's, you know, I bring that up to people too, is like, it's in the name, the word rapid, right? Rapid healing technique. And, and, and honestly, when, when we were first doing some clearings together and we were addressing some of my root causes of, of fears and embarrassments and things like that, things that had been there since, you know, for 10, 15 years, just kind of buried and suppressed. Um, part of me was like, how, how is that possible to like clear that in such a short time, but, but I really could feel a difference. I mean, it's like, and, and there were times where I could see a difference too. Like it, it actually, uh, you know, a lot of people are working on, on the Bates method and doing the vision training and getting kind of, you know, some, some nice gradual improvements and clear flashes and, and improvements there. But there were times when I felt like doing, actually addressing some of those root causes of what caused the blur in the first place sometimes even kind of jumped me even farther forward than, than the vision practices were doing. And, and I actually had a student who similar kind of thing where we were doing some of the reading work up close and she was farsighted and we, uh, we just went into the rapid healing technique and th this will lead me into another question about it. But, um, her, one of her statements was like, I'm afraid I haven't really cleared all my childhood fears. And, and that, that was quite a broad, statement really big blanket statement that could really knock out a bunch even without yeah. being really specific that's and, right and and we did the clearing and she opened her eyes and the print was clear where, wow. where before the clearing it was all <laughs> fuzzy and blurry and and so like to see that you know instant tangible vision improvement by actually addressing the the non-physical emotional right. connection there like I really encourage people to explore that because it's so it you, be really you just powerful. talked about the intent. Mm -hmm. You know, you made the intent to clear her childhood fears. Yeah. So th that's all you need is intent. And yeah. Intent, and it did. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't know. I mean, I remember, you know, in, in some of the ways you trained me in it of like, you know, some of these statements we want to get really specific and really pinpoint some, you know, really, you know, specific instance or feeling. And so at first I was like, I don't know, that sounds like it might be really broad, but, but it really worked. And, and I remember, you know, you giving some examples and, and also reading in your book about just, you know, doing these like really big clearings without getting super nitty gritty about it. And I think it, I guess it works both ways. Really it does. Really it broad. Does. Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It can be used many, many, many ways. And that was a perfect example of childhood fears 
mm -hmm. cleared yeah. cleared them. <laughs> yeah. So and it's really fascinating to think, like you pointed out earlier, of like this thing happened a long time ago, but there's this sort of thread that connects the present moment to that. And along the way, we might have those triggers and it might manifest in different situations or with different people. But I think a really valuable thing that you've shared today is that we can trace it back to its, you know, base root. Right. And, and that, that's really effective instead of having to go and, and kind of, you know, think about exactly. where it even came from. Um, right. So that, that's you know. that's the, the really value of using the muscle tapping because you can go back and say, when did this begin? And you can mm -hmm. start at age five, yes or no. Age six, no. Seven, yes. Oh, well, what happened at age seven? What were you doing at age seven? What was going on? Did you like your teacher? Did you, were your family all getting along? Or did your family get a divorce then? You know, all kinds of things you can trace it back so easily, so yeah. simply. Yeah, and, and, and the fact that our vision is our main sense and it's how we absorb the majority of the information about, about the world around us. I mean, there, it's got to leave an impression there, you know, like on the, on the retina, on the optic nerve, in the visual cortex, wherever, whatever part of the visual system. I mean, obviously we're hearing things and, and using our other senses too, but um, I, I really encourage people to think about how what, what they've received in through their eyes has, has affected them on that that non-physical level and, and some really valuable discoveries might come up about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. The workshop will teach you wonderful things to do for your life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's really awesome that you're, um, you know, including a, a copy of your book about the rapid healing technique as a part of the workshop and, uh, for a certain number of, of people who sign up, get the actual paperback one mailed to them, and then anybody after that can get the ebook right. version. The the um, book is a workbook, so mm -hmm. you can actually go through several chapters of clearing your entire energetic system. So you go through and check check off whether this needs clearing or not, and so you can actually go through a whole checklist and things you would never have thought of. Right can find out whether you need to clear it or not. So mm -hmm. it's a wonderful workbook. Yeah, totally. It's a, to sort of accompany the workshop is going to be awesome. And, and I know it's just a week away and there's a good chance that some people are going to be watching or listening to this after the workshop. And so, um, you know, maybe we'll be able to even figure something out about, you know, either providing a replay for it or even, you know, doing a, another offering of it in the future or something if people are interested. Sure, sure. But to, I do have a couple, um, well, real quick, before we, we move to the next thing, I just want to see if you would be able to just sort of briefly explain the muscle testing component of it, because some people might not be familiar with, and I know you're going to go into the teaching of it in the workshop, but just yeah. maybe just like what, what that if, is or how, how that works a little bit. If you go online and look up muscle testing, you will find 20 different ways to do it. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to just show one way in the book, mm -hmm. but people who already know how to muscle test, I encourage them just to use what they've been doing. Yeah. But um, muscle testing is a connection with your inner self. And so you're actually connecting to your inner self or your higher self, however you want to call it. And um, the God part of us. And uh, so it's a way to communicate. And for instance, when I, when I teach, sometimes I need my other hand. So I do it one handed. But mm -hmm. if, if I were the way I muscle test is strong is yes. That means it's locked and weak is no, it, it's unlocked. It's like a swinging door. The swinging door, when it's unlocked, you just push it and it goes, boom, open. But if it's locked, you go push it and it won't move. So that's a lock. I can push really hard. It's locked. But now I'm going to unlock it and it slides right open. So you can do it this way, this way. There's many ways to do it. Like you say, 
people go online and they can find out many ways to muscle test. But these are just simple. I've tried to pick the simplest for sure. the book. Cool. So, but it's just a way to connect, to get true answers from whatever you're working on, you know, mm -hmm. that you're, whatever issue you're working on. So we you have noticed check. that, that we, we incorporate it before and after the clearing to not only identify like, yeah, this is something that is affecting me and I need to clear it. And then after we clear it, it's sort of a kind of a second opinion of like, did it actually clear or do I need to kind of. It's a confirmation it? that it definitely yeah. is cleared. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have bigger issues and so you, you need to clear more, but yeah. that's one way to confirm it. You say, you know, does this need more clearing? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you know, whether it's, if it's a no, then you've cleared it. So. Yeah. And I remember before, before I worked with you, I had been introduced to muscle testing by somebody doing it to me. Right. So I would hold my arm out and they would put a little pressure on my arm and say, you know, don't let me push your arm down. And if it fell down, it was weak. If it stayed up, it was strong. Right. And so I, I was familiar with that, but I'm pretty sure, you know, you were the first person to teach me to do kind of self muscle testing where I I'd do it on myself. Mm -hmm. And, and there was a little bit of a learning curve for that. Like at first I wasn't sure if I was getting true answers or not, but you know, over time with, with practice, we can all kind of get more confident with, with that process. Yeah, well, muscle testing has been used by uh, chiropractors, mm -hmm. uh, holistic doctors for years, yeah. you know, for checking things. So my chiropractor, he, he muscle tests before he actually works on me. He muscle right. tests to see what's out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a practice that has been around for many, many years. Totally, yeah. You can muscle test food. If you're allergic to foods, you can muscle test this is good you know if you have any problem with that food so people that are have food allergies can check it out with their muscle testing yeah so you know even it, it is a part of the rapid healing technique but even even beyond that you know we can learn this as a skill that we can just apply in other areas and that's sort of a nice little side benefit of, of coming to the workshop and learning not only the rapid healing technique but then you just kind of get more familiar with the whole muscle testing thing absolutely yes yes well, since you, um, you know, trained me to become a Bates Method teacher, I, I wanted to, one of my favorite things about you, Dr. Tabor, is these little, short, little, almost like limericks that you, that you imparted on me in, in my teacher training that just kept coming up over and over and over again. And so what I wanted to do right now is just say three of them, and I just want you to, to briefly kind of extrapolate on it or just kind of say what you mean uh, when you say that. Okay. And, and the first one is that boredom kills vision. Absolutely, because you're, you're not focused. Boredom is a lack of focus. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much, you know, you're, you're not there. Mm -hmm. You daydream off you go you're bored yeah. like in school if you're not you know excited about what's being said up there you just leave the room yeah so you're not focusing <laughs> yeah and and in the context of the Bates method I feel like sometimes some people can get a little bored with some of the practices even and and I I, I always say the boredom kills vision statement to people to really let people know to make sure that they're having fun with it and that they want to be doing it and that it's engaging because if if in the attempt to improve the vision we're actually boring ourselves then we're kind of missing the mark there so well, the, whole, the whole thing with vision is to learn to be present mm -hmm. to be in the moment so if you're doing a swing you're doing the swing and you're in that moment and you're you're conscious of everything passing so your mind isn't off wandering. So, yeah. you know, there it is. Focus again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So awesome. That's the first one. So we know that boredom kills vision. And then the second one is that memory brings vision. That was one that you said to me over and over again. And it's it's really made a big difference, specifically with my eye chart practice. So Absolutely. do you want to kind of explain what that means? Memory brings vision? 
Yes, well, if you can't visualize it, you can't see it. If you can't remember it, you can't see it. So in our chart work, it's important that when you're doing chart work, that you maybe go up and take a good look at a letter. Yeah. Close and then step back and remember it very black and perfect and all around its shape. So it's memory. Dr. Bates found that out many, many years ago. Memory does bring vision. Uh, I just did a session the other day with a, a client that I hadn't seen in three or four years. He was a minus three something and now he's less than a minus one. Mm -hmm. And he was discouraged. <laughs> so we had a lesson and he wrote me back and said, I woke up this morning with new eyes. <laughs> so he had gotten excited again about, and I'm, and that was one of the big concepts I use. Memory brings vision and taught him how he could use that and build on the chart work. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, for me personally, when you were first teaching me that uh, it was interesting for me to feel hesi hesitation about that because when you told me, you know, hey, I want you to actually have your memory help you see the chart at a new distance, I, I could hear a voice in my head saying, well, that, that's kind of cheating. I'm not actually seeing it. I'm just remembering it. But then I realized that I was just suppressing my memory. You know, my memory was there saying, hey, like, I'm trying to help you see the letter. And I was like, no, <laughs> I need to just see it with my eyes, you know. And, and so it was really a big, big difference for me when I changed my internal dialogue from going, I know what that says, but I can't see it. I changed that to, I know what that says, so I can see it. You know, I was letting my memory assist me and, and, uh, and letting go of that feeling like some, for some reason that was a cheating, you know? Well, what, what I try to, I told this person the other day, I said, you have to go back to about five years old. And you know, when you're five years old, you played and pretended and you could be anything you wanted to be and you had no problem with that. Well, do that with the letters, you know, you can see them clearly, you know, be a little child again and imagine that you can do it. You know, children are very, go into that imaginary world a lot yeah. and they can pretend and play. Well, you need to pretend and play with the letters. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. Cool. So we've done boredom kills vision and memory brings vision. And the last one, one that probably took me the longest to really like get, because whenever you would say these things to me at first, I would be like, yeah, that I kind of get that, but it, you know, it, it has to, I have to really embody it and really have that kind of aha personal experience with it. Um, but the one where you said that the eyes attend the thoughts, um, that that one I think took me a little bit longer to really really fully grasp. So do you want to want to share that one a little bit? Okay. So there again, you have to use your imagination and what you think you create. So if you're projecting out on the chart the letter, you're creating it. So pretty much simple. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one thing that I, I really came to with that is like my eyes are, they're sort of following my mind or my attention, wherever my, my kind of my thinking goes, then the eyes are, are kind of interested in that and they follow where my attention and my, my mind goes. Um, as opposed to maybe, before I maybe thought that my eyes were kind of in charge and I was, they were kind of leading the, the way and, and then my mind was kind of following my eyes in a sense. So, so once again, with, with all these examples, we can kind of like, we're sort of changing our mind a little bit and just one little tweak can, can really make a big difference. Right. What well, what we're learning in vision training is eye mind coordination, getting the eye and the mind back together so where you look, you see. So before anyone has a vision problem, 
they automatically, wherever they look, they see. Mm -hmm. So eye training is just getting you back to your original healthy state of eye-mind coordination. I don't know if that says it pretty simply. Yeah, it does. Yeah, makes sense to me. And uh, it tying it into the, the rapid healing technique thing and the emotional connection, it's like maybe it would be valuable for people to, to ask themselves the question of when, when did my eyes and my mind kind of splinter apart from each other? or where, where did that disconnection kind of source from? Like you said, the example of like daydreaming in school, maybe it's just from boredom or just like, yeah, your eyes are looking at the teacher, but your mind is seeing something completely differently. Right. Um, and, and when we've got that, that dichotomy there, it's like what I heard you just say is like we need to bring those back together. And when we look at the teacher, we're seeing the teacher and thinking about the teacher. Uh, right. Really even if you're, focus. So even if you're bored, you say, I'm bored with this to yourself. You, yeah. you be honest with yourself. Yeah. This, this is boring. I wish I wasn't here. That's being in the moment. Yeah. Rather than leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I'm here. I don't like it. This is boring, but I'm here. Right. As opposed to not thinking that and just letting it go and, and just not and, even acknowledge, and a, acknowledging The other it. is escaping. Mm -hmm. And that never helps your vision. Yeah, yeah. So to face, to face the truth <laughs> and say I'm bored and I'm here and I can hardly wait till it's over, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love, I love, I love how it's, it all comes back to that, that present moment awareness and yeah. Right, right. I guess one, one last thing that I just want to highlight um, that really made an impression on me of working with you was when I first learned about the Bates method, I really looked at it as this way to improve my eyesight, get rid of my glasses, um, you know, some of the physical things and, uh, and really sp really focusing in on visual acuity, right? I was like, I just want to see sharper. I want to get rid of the myopia and the astigmatism. And, and it was really, really refreshing and helpful for you to, to share with me your opinion of the overall goal of the Bates method. And this is one thing I share with most of my students as well, is that the overall goal of the Bates method is to open up all the channels of the eyes. You know, the, the blood circulation, the lymph flow, the fluid exchange, the energy flow. And when the channels are open and it's the eyes getting that circulation, then, then the visual acuity does improve or the, the, not just the visual acuity, everything, all the visual skills and eye health in general. And, and that kind of helped zoom me out a little bit. I was a little too hyper-focused on the, just the visual acuity piece. And um, to have that more kind of broad understanding of, of the whole system there just was a big game changer for me. Right. It, the, the goal is to get the eyes relaxed. When the eyes are relaxed, everything is flowing yeah. <laughs> and functioning <laughs> and the muscles are loose and work properly. So yeah. that's, yes. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm glad we got to um, not only get a nice little intro here of, of a little bit of the history and background and, and of the rapid healing technique and, and really what it's used for and, and why it's so powerful to accompany with the vision training. Cause I feel like you're totally right. Like a lot of stuff can get stirred up when we're working on changing our vision. It's, it's, it's a big endeavor we're going through and to have this tool available to actually just clean that stuff up right when it's coming up and, and feel more confident to be able to navigate through the blur into the clarity with, with this mental focus and the emo emotional clarity there. Uh, it's just a really valuable thing. So, um, and we got to go a little bit into, you know, some more of the vision work and the bait stuff as well. So absolutely. It's a very powerful work. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. so definitely invite everybody listening or watching to check out uh, Dr. Tabor's class on, it's going to be Saturday, May 30th, 2020. And it's going to be at um, 10 o'clock Pacific time. That's one o'clock Eastern U S time. Um, it's going to be a great, you know, uh, presentation introduction to learning the technique and then and then we're going to be able to do a little q a at the end there in case you have any questions or things like that Absolutely. and i just added to my website integral eyesight.com slash rht which stands for rapid healing technique that's where you can sign up and uh and maybe we can see you there at the class um, or if you missed the class maybe reach out and, and express some interest and we can either 
organize another one or maybe get you get you the replay or something like that so yes and thank you very much yeah thank you so much i've I've been wanting to uh, to sit down and have a chat with you for so long. I'm so happy we finally got got to do it, and uh, maybe we can do some more. And I would love to also uh, have you join me on the Better Eyesight podcast uh, for an episode or two, where we go through and read Dr. Bates's magazines and and really go deeper into the Bates method stuff together. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Tabor. Right. And thank you, Nathan. And thank I look you, everybody. Look forward for to listening. seeing everybody at the workshop. All right. All right.